Bang! Welcome, boy! Divisional round, NFL playoff preview. Today's games, Sunday's games. Great games. Bengals at Bills, 3 p.m. Eastern time, followed by the Cowboys at San Francisco to take on the 49er football team, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. This is this is going to be a great day of football, followed by today's day of football, which is Casey Jaguars. Uh, we're doing this for every single round, every single game. We'll be breaking down all the games throughout the playoffs, so if you have a team, in the race, come hang out with us. If you want to win some money, come hang out with us because we're giving away our favorite prize pick squares. We're telling you the spread, where to fade the spread based on referee percentages and <laughs> statistics. Uh, so just hang out with us for the rest of the playoffs because we will be here with y'all. First game up on the slate, Bengals at Bill. What are you smiling for? You know the Niners. <laughs> I know. I know. In the it fucking doesn't matter. Night. I'm just ready. I'm ready to run through a brick wall for this ask. team, damn it. Are you still going to be here next week if the Niners lose? Like, are you coming in? Yeah, and y'all going to feel it. <laughs> y'all going to hate me. Uh, y'all gonna hate me either You're way. Hate actually, you m- way yeah. more if you win. Yeah, I'd much rather them just based off your emotional availability. I think I'd rather you, them lose. No, actually, no, no. right. I lied. That's I, not. That's yeah. not a good. You don't, thing you don't want. You don't want. Yeah. Number one, we got Ike, a Giants fan in here. If the Cowboys advance, that's not good. We don't want to listen to that, and then we just don't want to listen to that either. So, oh, I'd way rather. I mean, if we're looking at it from like a Cowboys advancing, I would much. I, I like that angle from an oh. Ike point of view. I think this is a lose lose. Lose lose situation. Yeah. I don't know how many st- situations there are, but they're all the only losers. winners here are the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into the first game: Bengals at Bills. I love it. Um, injury report: Look, it's not looking great for the uh, Bengals offensive line right now. Alex Kappa most likely uh, going to be out. Questionable though, and Jonah Williams unlikely to play. Leo Collins out. Like this whole line is um, is very hurt right now, and it's a really bad time for your offensive line to be hurt heading into. Uh, the playoff divisional matchup, Bills versus Bengals. Spread is minus five and a half in favor of the Bills, and the over-under is at 48 and a half. Looks like there's going to be a little snow. It's going to be a little cold out there in Buffalo. Obviously, this is the week uh, 17 matchup that we did not get to uh, get to see, but I think, like you said, the O-line is going to be the big subject of discussion. Like Everything I've listened to about this game has just come down to the offensive line. So it begs the question, like, do you think the Bengals are good enough? Do you think they're scrappy enough? Do you think Joey Shiesty is into that next level? Did he take the step up to the elite level of QB play where he elevates the team past the uh, offensive line conundrum they find themselves in? Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, quick question. If there were no injuries to this Bengals O-line. Bengals. Yeah. Not even ba- close. Bengals are the better team, right? Yeah. This I would, would be like a pick up with pick the Bills yeah. at home. Well, yeah. So, like you said, um, I believe so. Bills were two and a half point road favorites in the week 17 game that obviously got canceled. Uh, and that over under was set at 50 and a half. But that was a road favorite. The Bills were still picked to be the favorite on the road. They were minus two and a half favorites. So now the Bills are at home and they're minus five and a half favorites. But I would imagine if that. Offensive line was fully healthy. Probably yeah, it wasn't, even, it wasn't fully healthy at the time either. So I think that probably played into the spread. And I think that's why I think it opened at three and a half probably and then <laughs> moved to five and a half because all the sentiment around this game had been around the offensive line for the Bengals. I think another storyline here is the offensive line for the Bills is not very good either. No. Like I, neither I, teams are great. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think the narrative of this injured O line is, is getting a little bit overplayed. I'm not trying to take away from the importance of it, but. Five and a half just seems like too many points to be laying uh, with. I don't. I don't think the, with the inferior team. Like I, I just don't think the Bills at this point in the season are better than the Bengals. Yeah, I mean we talk about like I just hear a lot about like oh Joe Burrow he's going to get sacked eight times again and he's going to be under so much pressure. But it's like this is kind of the old line that Joe Burrow was playing with last year and he was able to advance against the Titans yep. again sacked eight times. And I know the Titans aren't the same animal that the Bills are, but like. Josh Allen was sacked seven times last week against Miami. So, you know, it, it, I, I think the, that narrative can also be flipped on the other side where it, it, I'm, I'm worried about Josh Allen getting sacked a, a bunch too. I think people agree with you because 63% of the bets are on the Bengals to cover. So it looks like you're, you're not alone. I mean, you got more than half of uh, the bets are being placed on the Bengals to cover. Joe Burrow also, uh, he prefers the road games to the home games when it comes to covering the spread here. Uh, road, he's 18-7 and seven on the road against the spread. They keep so. doubting him. I, I like, like, young teams that have energy like the Bengals do because, I don't know, I feel like they always, uh, they're ready to go in comeback mode. Like, they don't put their head down and, like, I fuck, we're out of it. They, like, keep fighting throughout the fourth four quarters of the game, and I feel like that's what we'll get from Cincinnati. I think, you know, the respect has to be paid to Buffalo, too. They are riding an eight-game win streak right now. 
Like, I haven't really heard that talked about at all. Like, they haven't lost in a very long time. They're, they might not be putting together, like, incredibly, you know, impressive performances, but an eight-game win streak at any point in the NFL, including a playoff game, is pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, that's true. I just think that, um, I don't know, I think the Bills are relying too much on, on Josh Allen. I, I think ever since Thanksgiving, they've been starting to run a lot more empty sets, and it feels like it feels like the Bills are starting to realize that they don't have shit behind Stephon Diggs, and that they feels just like need, you only trust Diggs and Knox right now. Yeah, and even even Knox, I'm not too sure of anyways. But like, if we look at like who's going to be better in this scenario, are the are the Bengals going to be more successful replicating what Miami did against the Bills? Or are the Bills going to be more successful replicating what the Ravens did against the Bengals? Because both of these teams struggled against inferior teams in the like as divisional rival games. So I think interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point because the Bills I, can't replicate a Ravens defense. You can't fake a defense. No, you no. can't. I mean, the Ravens rely a lot on their personnel with their corners that can tackle, their linebackers that are super fast, and I, I think the Bengals defense can create the same chaos that Miami did against against the Bills. They blitzed a lot. Uh, Bengals blitz at a pretty healthy amount, but they also play cover eight a lot. They they drop back a lot of people in the coverage, and I think they're just going to let Josh Allen run around the line of scrimmage and be like, "Go ahead and heave it deep." You know, you might get you might be successful sometimes, but you're also going to create turnovers. And you know, I think the Bengals trust their offense to keep things moving to where they're going to let Josh Allen shoot himself in the foot. Yeah, he's got an interception in three of his last four games, so he's been throwing plenty of picks. I mean, the Bengals' defense is primed to get one here. I guess my question is, like, Bengals' defense has been good. Do they have enough in the pass rush category to, like, take advantage of the Bills' offensive line? That's, like, the one question. Because if they can get a lot of pressure on Josh Allen, like, their their offensive line is not great, but I feel like since since he's, like, strong all around, they don't have a lot of deficiencies, but I don't know. I feel like they will need – they're going to need a really strong pass rush this game to just continue to get pressure into Josh Allen. That's when you force the mistakes, when you get in his face, because he only really trusts Diggs at this point. Mm-hmm. He's going to look one way, you know, put cover two. They're obviously, without a, a woozy at cornerback, he's been out for a minute. Uh, Eli Apple's a little bit banged up. He should be fine. But he's their one right now, and he's, I mean, he's not a great cornerback by any fucking stretch of the He's played well this year, kind of, but like... Serviceable. Yeah, not a great cornerback, and that's a little scary in the secondary. Um, but it sounds like you got the Bengals taking this one. Yeah, I, I, I think the Bengals just match up really well. Um I don't know what the Bills are going to do on defense to stop Joe Burrow because ever since Von Miller's been hurt, they don't get a whole bunch of pressure and they don't blitz a lot. And so it's kind of like no matter what the Bills want to do on defense, the Bengals have an answer for that where it's like if you if you do want to play, you know, one high safety and start blitzing Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow's been successful under pressure against the blitz. We've seen the Bengals' offense shift from trying to be super explosive in the beginning of the year to like – just kind of condensing its offense to be more efficient and just attack the middle in these short plays. So it's like, like if you drop back, he can he can kind of dice you up there too. Like I, I just don't know what the Bills do on defense. Meanwhile, I feel like Josh Allen is kind of bound to make some mistakes on offense because the Bengals are going to let him go 200 miles an hour and just hope that he crashes, which he's kind of been <laughs> he's doing. He's been doing it a yeah. lot. I mean, he's been very sloppy for the uh, probably say his last like. Ever since the shoulder, the uh, elbow injury or whatever, he's just been sloppy. Yeah, I would, I would exactly. also like to point out that I said the Bills are on an eight-game win streak. The Bengals are actually on a nine-game win streak. I would say they got to be up there, too. Yeah. And they've played at Tennessee, Kansas City, at Tampa Bay, at New England, Baltimore, two games in a row, and beat them both times. So mm-hmm. that's and a I th- I pretty that, fucking serious I know that that was like a Tyler Huntley, probably an Anthony Brown game, but like those Raven, that Raven team's matched up so well with the Bengals mm-hmm. to where I, I do think like – Beating a Tyler Huntley team means a lot more than beating Skylar Thompson. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. just I'm no, just no, no. I, I, like yes. Looking at these game logs, like the, how Joe Burrow put up 480 yards against the Falcons. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tough. I think that was that was the day we went to Hoboken. I feel like I remember just like people going nuts about Joe Burrow. Maybe no, I just wasn't paying attention. I was like, Fuck but yeah, this. if I'm looking at like the Bills who just struggled against the Dolphins last week and the Bengals who had a, I mean, yeah, sure you could say they struggled maybe, but they still came out with the win against the Ravens. And the Ravens are probably miles ahead of the Dolphins as far as just an overall team right now, uh, even with uh, Tyler Huntley out there at quarterback. Uh, I just think the, the way the Bengals are playing, like if you want to get into the game predictions here. Are, I know you sw- I just, are you switching? I was just going to say, I know. I, I'm kind of debating now, too. I'm, now I'm, so, I'm so in on the Bengals. I think they're just getting doubted too hard. I think too much is being read with this O-line. Like, I do worry about that. 
I, I worry about it too, but I just feel like the no, Bengals. I mean like that people are like way too. Oh, oh. It's like the only narrative. Yeah. Right. Oh, wait. It's not. Yeah, I worry that too much is being read into the injuries on this Bengal O line because it, it kind of feels like the Bengals, with their shift in offensive philosophy, have been like almost preparing for these O line injuries because they, again, they've just condensed a lot of it. They're keeping it more around the line of scrimmage. So, what's your score prediction? I'm trying to fucking find it. 24 21 Bengals. 24 21 Bengals. All right. You've got a familiar, you've got a similar. Yeah, I have the same score, but I have 24 21 Bills. Uh, I just think the Bills are kind of, they're on like a revenge tour, you know? The Bengals just went, they're good. Give, give, give them a year off. Bengals, uh, you know, <laughs> just give them a year off. Got to rest, rest up for next year. Bills, it's their year. Also, uh, you're, you're going to lay five and a half with the Bills. I didn't say, oh, well, game prediction. I mean, if we're talking about. You said same score, 24 21. Yeah, 24 21. Bills. So, so, you, take so you would take the Bengals. I would take the Bengals on the spread, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, best bet, my best bet of this all this whole game is the under. I love the under. I I, I got the, the referee stat here. Carl Sheffers <laughs> has refed 11 playoff games since 2010. The under in his games that he's refed, 10 and 1. You want a better stat? No. For the spread? Joe Burrow and the Bengals have not lost by more than three with Jamar Chase in the lineup. That's a good stat. In 20 straight games. That's a good stat. They haven't lost by more than three. Right. With with Jamar Chase in. Well, that's why I have the Bills winning 25-22. Three-point game, not more than three. <laughs> I will take the Bengals plus five and a half, but I will take the Bills winning the game. I do think, let's not forget how they went out of the playoffs last year. Um, despite the way they're playing, kind of, I guess, again, eight-game win streak, uh, they're, they have to be hungry for revenge. They have to be hungry to, back, to get back against the Chiefs and uh, kind of revenge what happened last year. So I'm going to take the Bills 25-22 in this one. And on that note, for my prize pick square, I'm taking Stefan Diggs more than six receptions. I think um, kind of, you know, what we spoke on, I, I don't think Allen has a ton of trust in his other wide receivers. Isaiah McKenzie, Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis is on and off games, and Knox, too, is someone I'm not overly excited about. So I think if their old line is under pressure and he's under pressure often, like that's where quick slants to Diggs come into play, quick outs to Diggs, screen plays to Diggs. I think six, six receptions is a nice, easy number that he can – uh, I just think it's a mismatch on the outside, too. Like, him versus Eli, Eli Apple is a fucking joke. I like it. I would take his yards. I would take everything Diggs this week. All right. I'm going to go with the quarterback that we've been talking about a lot, Joe Burrow. More than 11 and a half rushing yards. And, look, this is one of those ones where I don't know if I talked myself into it because of the whole O-line thing where I'm thinking, you know, backup all offensive linemen. They're either going to want Joe to get the ball out really quick, and if he can't, he may be scrambling a little bit. This this line he basically he basically floats around this every single game. He gets like ten yards, nine yards, eleven yards. He's right there. He never really goes over it though. But playoff game, so much on the line. He knows he's got to dig deep. I think he's going to get those extra couple of yards on this. I think we'll we'll see him probably finish with around fifteen or uh, twenty five rushing yards. So give me the uh, give me the more. I'm going to go with Devin Singletary to have less than fifty two and a half total yards. Uh, we've seen these last couple of weeks. He's starting to get out-touched by James Cook. Uh, last week against the Patriots, he was out-touched. Uh, and in week 18, he was also out-touched by him. It, this first matchup, Bills and Bengals, Devin Singletary got the start, but James Cook came in shortly after, started to get more work, and then obviously that game was canceled early. But I, I think we're going to see more of a shift to James Cook. Um, Cook has also just outplayed Singletary straight up. And the Bengals' run defense is pretty good. They're 14th in DVOA on the season. But DJ Reader has been – he's been a monster for this Bengals' defense. Uh, teams are averaging 4.6 yards per run when DJ Reader's off the field and only 3.6 yards per run when DJ Reader's on the field. Big man filling that hole. Yeah, and, and we look at some workhorses going up against the Bengals with DJ Reader in the lineup. Derrick Henry off 17 touches with only 38 rushing yards. Nick Chubb was held to 34 rushing yards. Ramondre Stevenson held to 30 rushing yards. And, and again, like I just don't even think Singletary gets that work that these guys get. So I, I feel really good about Devin Singletary going less than 52.5 total yards. I'm going to go with – I feel good about the rushing, but I'm going to throw a receiving in there too because he's, he's also – just not getting that much yeah. receiving work anyway. So those are uh, top five defense against the run right now too, or they were this season. So I, I like that a lot. I, I've been, I've been uh, doing that basically all season, picking sure. running backs against the Bengals and taking their unders and lesses. Which, which also goes to why I think, um, I, I think Bengals winning this game is 
my best bet. I feel uh, like Jonah I'm a, Williams and Kappa officially ruled out for it. So official? Be without their three guys, yeah. All righty. Did knew you that. ever – did you think about that? I did. Okay. Does that make you want to change anything? <laughs> Not at all. Big narrative. All right. Well, Tony, San Francisco it's plays time. the Cowboys at home. Three and a half point favorites. The Niners are 45 and a half point over. Under, as of right now, the Dallas O-line, I believe, is the only thing semi-banged up. Jason Peters left the game early last week and does not seem that he's going to play this week. He uh, missed practice again on Thursday. He's fucking old as shit. Yeah, 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 he, was I don't think he was a, a, yeah. an impact player. Like 42. Or <laughs> Anyways, yeah. um, both teams look really, really good coming off of last week's games. I'll let you start with how, why you feel like the Niners are going to lose this game. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, Niner, Niners are coming away with a dub, and I don't think it's going to be relatively close. Everything I'm hearing is that this is going to be a close game, and, like, if you were to tell me that these two teams were matching up in this round a week ago before the Bucks game, before the Seahawks game, like, I don't think this is a three-and-a-half-point game. I think people are putting a lot into the Cowboys off of beating like this terrible Bucks team, and everyone's like, "Oh, the Cowboys are back! The Cowboys are back! They're Cowboy- so back!" Cowboys were like not a sexy team to finish off the year against like the Sam Howell Commanders, the Josh Dobb Titans, even Gardner Minshew Eagles. Like, I, I don't know. I think I think people are are trying to get too cute with this. It just on on both sides. If you guys were to rank these four units of like. Niners offense, Niners defense, Cowboys offense, Cowboys defense. Or the Niners offense and defense not number one and two in that ranking? Offense? Mm. I don't think their offense is number one. Well, I think, but like, is it, like, is it... The only the only uh, issue is, like... I'm not saying that's the ranking. I'm saying, like, you could put the Niners defense one, Niners offense two. It's probably, two, like, if you matched every part of it up, or if you match like, position group by position group, the Niners take everything except the most important position. I, I see. I don't think that Dak is actually playing better than Brock Purdy. I think Dak is better, and I think Dak will play better in this game. Dak, to me, gives off a lot of Kirk Cousin vibes, where it's just like, in these type of moments, the dude crumbles. That's fair. He's had a few of those. Um, I, I don't know. I just feel like... Uh, I haven't really been a big buyer of Dak, but I feel like the more I watch him play, the more I've watched him play this season, the more kind of in, in, in on him I am. I just feel like he was so in control last week, and I feel like that's going to carry over to this week. I mean, Niners are obviously uh, a fucking powerhouse of a team, and, like, Purdy just needs to play okay in order to probably get a win for this, and that's why the, the spread's there, and they, they are the fucking favorites in this game. But I don't know. I, I think that the offense is not that far off, and I think that the defense – I think, like, pound for pound, yes, probably the Niners take it on both sides, but I don't think it's out of the question that, like, if – the if one of those sides of the Cowboys plays a really good game up to their potential, then it becomes a problem for the Niners. Maybe like if, if the, the defense plays a great game or if their offense plays a great game, the ceiling for both of those sides of the balls are very high. I think the problem is though is that the Cowboys like best eleven on defense and what they want to do is have three safeties out there. They want Jermaine Curse out there, but that's a small lineup. And you're gonna go up against Jermaine the Jermaine Curse. Did I say Jermaine Kers? You did. I didn't mean... Oh, fuck, what's his you, first? Not I was only Kers. asking because I was like, that could be... No, 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 no. I know he was a it's, receiver it's not, um, back in the day. But. Fuck, dude. I don't remember the dude's first name. His last name is Kers. But he plays uh, like that slot corner position. And... Um, it's J. Ron. J. You know why I thought of Jermaine Kers? Because I was going to use him in trivia. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Hey, I just blew that cover. Hey. <laughs> Write that down real quick. <laughs> um... Yeah, but, like, that is the Cowboys' best 11, and that doesn't match up well against the Niners who live in 21 personnel. Like, you're just going to get bullied at that point. So I don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to play the defense that they want. I think the Niners basically can look at the Cowboys' defense and be like, you have two good players of digs and not a whole lot of depth behind them, and then up front you have Micah Parsons and not a whole lot of depth behind them. Like, I, I think the game plan is really easy for the Cow- for the Niners to just line up uh, George Kittle next to, M- next to Mike McGlitney and just run the ball at Mike Parsons See, funny, all day long. Funny you say that. I'm glad you said that because both of these defenses are actually very, very good against the run, and especially with, when it comes to giving up rushing touchdowns, they don't. They just don't give up rushing touchdowns. Cowboys defense is tied for second in least amount of rushing touchdowns given up, and then the Niners are tied for third. So, like, they're right there. These teams, I'm worried about like Christian McCaffrey scoring touchdowns, stuff like that. Like he'll get his yards maybe, but I'm I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, <laughs> passing touchdowns in this game. No rushing touchdowns at all, maybe. I, I think it's a pass heavy script for both sides too. But the Cowboys have 
faced significantly the least amount of 21 personnel in the NFL. Like, they just haven't faced a run game like the Niners have, that the Niners have on offense. I, I think they're just going to make them uncomfortable. You know, on, on the flip side, I, I think what the Cowboys want to do or what they're going to need to do to be successful is have Lamb operate out of the slot. And I think he could have a similar game to Metcalf where he'll have his plays, but, like, with not a whole lot of depth behind him, it, it's just it's not going to work for four quarters. You know, like, Niners are great against tight ends, so I don't think Dalton Schultz is that number two option that you're going to be like, oh, we got Dalton Schultz. Like, that's going to work. Michael Gallup has been irrelevant all year long. Like, it sucks. I, yeah, it, I mean, the depth here obviously goes towards the Niners. I get what yeah. you're saying. It's almost like the Dallas Cowboys, really good players are really fucking good, but they need to play a flaw. They need to play up to their ability in order to stay with the 49ers. Yeah. So there's not a lot of room for error there. Because right. it's like the Niners, two of their good players can fuck up, and they still have like, a, you know, George Kittle and Debo can disappear. They still have C-Mac. They still have Brandon Ayuk. They still have- I think I think George Kittle is essentially just going to be a seventh lineman in this game, and it's not right. going to matter because they have the weapons of CMC and Debo and Ayuk. You're just saying that because I have Kittle and Dealer no deal. Yeah, you do, which I, I tried to tell you. Not I didn't I have a think, choice. It was him or, like, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan Mason or some shit. <laughs> fucking nonsense. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, all that being said, Can I I'm, get, st- I'm st- yeah. I want to get into the referee. Okay. <laughs> all right. I, all he, that being said, nothing matters except the referee. Well, here's stuff. the thing. This is Bill Vinovich. Everyone knows the name. You may not know who he is, but you've definitely heard the name when it comes to referees in the NFL. Underdogs are 11-5 and five against the spread in Vinovich games this season making him the most profitable ref for underdogs this year. In the last decade, road teams are 83 and 64 against the spread in Vinovich games. Vinovich has not been a good sign for the 49ers as they've lost three in a row straight up when he was the referee and four of their last five, one of those being the 2020 Super Bowl versus the Chiefs. I'll tell you what, though. Out of all the refs we could get, Vinovich is the guy I want. Even though we're 0-3 or whatever, he swallows his whistle. Like, he will not throw a flag on anybody, and because I think we're the more physical team, give me Bill Villain. Give me who, whatever give the me fuck. Vin- Vin- give me Bill. Vin- Big give Bill me that guy. on the field with my Niners. Uh, lastly, the uh, this is the ninth time the Cowboys and 49ers will be playing in a playoff game together, and the Cowboys are 5-3 and three straight up, meaning they're about to go. Is that, what are you going? You're going back to the 90s with this? Well, that's when they played, man. I'm just I'm just giving you the history. <laughs> and right. also, 66% of the bets are on the 49ers to cover, so maybe a little fade the public action, maybe a little ride the Vinovich action. All right, game prediction? 30 to 20, Niners win, big. I'm taking Dallas 25 to 23. I'm on Dallas 27 23, don't don't fade the refs. Brett Maher over easily missing at least one field goal. They're not going to let him attempt a field goal. Can't well, that, miss that's it. The you thing. can't he, miss it if they don't let him kick it. He's going to go 0 for 1. They're going to give him one shot. They're going to be like, all right, one we, shot. you probably it, had the like yips last week. He's going to miss it, and we're going to be like, yo, you're cut. I don't know. I mean, I think that means more fourth down opportunities for Dallas. It means more scores and more touchdowns. You're fucked. C-Mac, not fucked, though. He's my prize pick square. I'm taking uh, C-Mac 34 and a half receiving yards. More than that, you know, uh, C-Mac will not be the, ru- uh, the reason that the Niners lose this game. I think he'll be plenty involved. I think they're going to lean on their workhorse for this. I think they know what I think they know what they got to do here. The receiving aspect for me, I was looking at some games with him and Purdy, trying to get a split of like uh, the Niners have just like won so many games by a big margin. It's hard to get like a close look at like what they want to do when they're in a general game script. They've played four games together, C Mac and Brock Purdy, where the game fina- the finality of the game was within sixteen points. So you're talking about like just four games together where it wasn't even sixteen points is like a blowout, but anything that was within sixteen points and in those games, C Mac averages nine targets per game, which is a twenty seven and a half percent target share. So I think outside of blow blowouts, outside of whatever trailing, uh C Mac is very clearly a massive part of this receiving game. You give him six, seven, eight targets, he's gonna get the thirty five receiving yards. So I'm in on C Mac on this one. I like it. Uh, you know, with the Cowboys pass rush too, I think C Mac's probably a good, you know, safety blanket. We'll probably see Brock Purdy dumping it off a lot to him. Yeah. Surprisingly, like it feels like C Mac doesn't get to that number though. He doesn't often. I just feel like this is a game where a lot of their offense is gonna run through him. Yeah. Could definitely see it. Definitely not gonna take the under with how good C Mac's yeah, no, being. Yeah. No. So I think that's the right side to be on. I'll go with the I'll take another running back in this game. Ezekiel Elliott. I'm going to go less than 43 and a half total yards. 
Uh, Niners do a great job at limiting yards before contact. They get to running backs early, and uh, they have the third lowest rate of allowing runs of three or more yards before contact. Only 17 plays Zeke has this year where he's gone for 10 or more yards. He's just he's not explosive, all right? Uh, I saw this tweet the other day. Zeke, on his last 40 carries, has gone for 74 yards. Dude is just washed. Tough and, guy. Tough guy. That's what Mike McCarthy loves. He, he is. I guess you would classify him as a thumper nowadays. Thump, maybe Thump daddy. Yeah, maybe you want to use him on the goal line. I don't know. I, it, I think the Cowboys would be smart to just kind of let Zeke sit this one out. Tony Pollard's obviously the more <laughs> explosive back. Like Zeke's also struggled to get to this line in his last three games, so I, I, like I hate Zeke. And the game script, like we said, is probably going to be pass happy on both sides. <clears throat> My only concern is just like Mike McCarthy is such a fucking bonehead. idiot. Yeah, yeah. Just, let's like, run a Zeke no, fourteen times. No matter the outcome of this game, Zeke's getting twenty two carries probably. So yeah. We need to establish. I, I mean, the thing, the crazy thing is, though, is I, I think he's going to need like 15, 16 carries to get close to this line, which is like so inefficient. Mm-hmm. But I do think there is a chance he gets there on volume. But with the Niners, like they, they should be ahead. They should be able to put up points. I think they're just going to be relegated to like having to play Tony Pollard. Yeah. No, I feel that. And um, I mean, I think that's the way they win the game. I mean, if Zeke, if Zeke gets 16, 17 carries, I'm, I'm worried. Worried for my prediction. Yeah. Maybe. Or they're up so much that they're just like, yeah, fuck it. That was the flip side of <laughs> those fucking stats. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> All right. I got the uh, wide receiver two for uh, San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Ayuk, more than 54 and a half receiving yards. I, um, I've i just been liking the way that wide receiver two has been playing against Dallas. If you go back week 15, 16, 17, 18, look, I'm looking back. Week 15, Zay Jones went for 6-109, and 109, while Christian Kirk went for 6-92. and 92. Week 16, Devonta Smith went 8-for-113, while A.J. Brown went 6-for-103. Still both great great games. They're giving up a lot of uh, yards to wide receivers, especially wide receiver twos. Uh, so that's why I'm all in on Brandon Ayuk. Even Robert Woods and Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks went 4-for-66, and Woods went 5-for-39. So even those guys that are your wide receiver 1 and 2 that you wouldn't really classify, you're not really sure you would put who where, the, the guy who was the number 2 still went off. So give me uh, all the Brandon Ayuk. He's also been averaging uh, 66.6 receiving yards over his last five games. Uh, some satanic shit, <laughs> and uh, you can't fade the devil. Uh, so. I, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like that narrative. We, we mentioned the lack of depth that the Cowboys have behind Trayvon Diggs, and I think that's basically the reason why wide receiver twos go off. I just, in this matchup, I'm not sure if you would really say Brandon Ayuk is the two, just uh, because of the difference that Debo and Ayuk usage. play. Right. Yeah. Like, it, it almost feels like you, you would want to put Diggs on Ayuk because Ayuk runs those deeper routes. Like, it, it, it feels like it wouldn't McCarthy make sense. McCarthy going to do that. Maybe. I mean, I guess that's more of a Quinn. What's what's Quinn's first name again? Dan. Dan, Dan Quinn. I was like, thinking Robert Quinn. I don't like to talk about him. Yeah. yeah, that's more of a Dan Quinn thing. But, I, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like it would be a waste to put uh, Diggs on Debo because Debo's probably going to play a lot more around the line of scrimmage. I, I, I think it's probably a Debo game over an Ayuk game. but We'll find I, out. We will. I don't we'll hate f- it either way, we'll though. We'll find like, out. The, uh, the 49ers actually give up the sixth most uh, – Yards to receivers, so yeah, forty niners. Yeah, they're very good at stopping the run. So that's you know, T. Y. Well, Hilton, twenty five and a half. Nah, I mean it. You it, said it, not me. <laughs> it will be a C. D. Lamb game. I think going with C. D. Lamb over receptions or yards is probably a good bet too. But um, yeah, it, it's just there's there's not enough horses for the for the Cowboys there. Anything else? Niners win the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy. Oh Super yeah, Bowl so MVP. Uh, we'll, we'll mention that one uh, last thing if. The Niners make the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy will be the first rookie in uh, NFL history to make the Super Bowl. Be pretty. Um, Brock Purdy will be the first rookie. Yes. Really? Correct. Yeah, it feels like there would have been another rookie that kind of just like slipped his way into Big the ben Super Bowl. Wasn't a rookie? No, he didn't. He didn't make it. No. no. Tom Brady didn't. No rookie starting quarterback has ever made the Super Bowl. They even put, like, on it, let alone one, which obviously yeah. makes no fucking <laughs> sense. Like, if they never made obviously they haven't won a Super Bowl. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. crazy. I was reading. I was like, that's so dumb. I was like, no rookie starting quarterback has ever made the Super Bowl, let alone won it. 
Like, obviously, no fucking, <laughs> no one's won it if they haven't made it. Oh, I thought that meant, like, let alone one, as in, like, the number. Like, yeah. no one's done it, oh. let alone <laughs> one person has done <laughs> yeah, it. Like, no. what? Neither they're, makes they're sense. They're just trying to sound fancy with that shit. All right. Uh, well, that'll wrap up Sunday's games, and that's it for the weekend. Next weekend will be the conference championships, AFC, NFC. We will be bike breaking them down. I'm assuming there's one Saturday, one Sunday, so it'll probably be probably. two yeah. games again. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're new here and want to hear those. Make sure you hit the button that looks like this. But most importantly, make sure you go to Prize Picks, go download the app. It's the first link in the description, and you go grab these squares that we have laid upon you um, like some fucking geometry teachers. All right? And use promo code BDGE. When you do so, you'll get a 100% deposit match. Bing bong. Oh, brother. brother. I, I, I went. Bing bong. It, was a- it would have been fine if I knew that was coming. Ping Bong's a suitable replace. It was so underwhelming hearing Ping Bong over Bang. <laughs>